I know you've heard the saying, you are what you eat. But I'm here to tell you, you are not just what you eat, but you are what your body could do with the foods that you're eating. Stay with your lady Salome in this video. I'm going to show you what hydrochloric acid is, that's stomach acid, the benefits of it, and then how to improve your stomach acid. Stay tuned. My lovely viewers welcome to Ezra wellness where you learn proving ways to help to live in this is your lady Salome Admako I'm a nurse by profession if you want to learn proving ways to help to live in subscribe to my channel and when you do click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my educative videos today I'm talking about stomach acid yes hydrochloric acid remember in my last video I had said that I'm doing a series on how to maximize your digestive health and today I'm talking about stomach acid. Stomach acid is hydrochloric acid and this acid is secreted by the cells in our stomach. Stomach acid we need it to break down our food especially our protein. Your stomach is considered the body's blender like your vitamins, your ninja or your kitchen aid. That is your stomach and that is its job. So the stomach supposed to make anything that we put in our mouth liquefied to be able to move on to the small intestines to be absorbed. And for the stomach to do this, you need the muscles of your stomach to be very healthy. And we, you know, we do healthy muscles by exercise. And then the stomach also need what we normally call a stomach acid. So what are some of the benefits of this stomach acid to break down the food? I said that point number two, of the benefit is that we need it to be able to kill any bacteria or pathogen that comes with our food because if the acid is that high any pathogen or bacteria that comes with it will be destroyed and because of that you are not going to get any parasite or anything in your body point number three we need the stomach acid to be able to absorb some specific vitamins and minerals and i will talk about two of them vitamin b12 Vitamin B12, which we need in our energy pathway, we also need in our brain function, and we need it in our overall healthy of all the cells in the body. And this vitamin B12, let's say you eat your beef or your chicken, which normally contain this vitamin B12, you need enough stomach acid in the stomach to be able to extract the vitamin B12 from your beef. And then in the presence of the stomach acid in your stomach, the body produce what is called intrinsic factor and the intrinsic factor will bind to the vitamin b12 and the two of them will walk down as a pair into the small intestines to gain access into your bloodstream and then the intrinsic factor will degrade in the vitamin in the small intestine so if you don't have intrinsic factor with your vitamin b12 B12 will not be able to gain access into your bloodstream to be used for all the benefits that the body need. Also, when it comes to your iron, you need stomach acid to be able to turn iron from the ferric acids to the ferrous that your body will be able to absorb. If you don't have enough stomach acid, this process will not happen and you will not be able to absorb your iron even though you could be eating foods that are really high in these vitamins without the presence of enough stomach acid you will not be able to absorb it also you need stomach acid to be able to mix with the food so that when it moves on down the pancreas will be able to release the sodium bicarb and all that to be able to neutralize everything for the enzymes to be able to work on it so that you'll be able to absorb the rest of your nutrients because of these benefits and more that is why you need enough stomach acid in your stomach you say to yourself salme how will somebody know that they have low stomach acid these are some of the symptoms that you will you will experience if you have low stomach acid fatigue you be tired all the time because especially your iron and your b12 you know when you have low iron you get really tired yes and you need stomach acid to be able to absorb that and if you don't have enough you will feel fatigue and most of the time people who feel fatigue after meals 
even after they chewed properly, it could be that they don't have enough stomach acid. And that is what is causing that. Also, birching and burping after eating, feeling of gas and bloating after meals could be a sign that you have low stomach acid. Also, if you feel um, you have anemia that is not responding to iron treatment, it could be that you have low stomach acid. People who see undigested food in their poop, it could be that your blender, that is your stomach, is not working properly. And probably you don't have enough stomach acid to break down your food. That is why you see that. People with bad breath, it could be that you have low stomach acid. If you have headaches a lot, it could mean you have low stomach acid. If you wake up in the morning and you normally would not feel the hunger at all, that could mean that you have low stomach acid. And then if you have heartburn, you say, what? Yes, heartburn. Because, you know, people take medication thinking that if you have heartburn, that means you have too much stomach acid. But no. Studies have shown that heartburn is actually low stomach acid that causes that. Because if you have low stomach acid, it causes the lower esophageal sphincter to weaken. And that will cause the acid in the stomach to back up. That is what makes us think that we have um, too much acid in the stomach. But the opposite is the case. Normally, we have low stomach acid. And that is what is causing your heartburn. Also, eating too much sugar, too much coffee, alcohol, processed food, too much chocolate. All these foods could weaken the lower esophageal sphincter and lead to heartburn. And people think that it's too much stomach acid. No, normally, you don't have too much stomach acid. It's because of these foods that we're eating. So you say, Salome, what are some of the causes of low stomach acid? Stomach acid, one of the causes is age. As we age, naturally, our body do produce less stomach acid. For example, after the age of 40 going, 50, 60, your body tends to produce low stomach acid. Yes, it's natural. That is why you normally see that teenagers could eat so many things and children and they are not having any heartburn. But you adults, you cannot handle a lot of things and you get heartburn because you don't have enough stomach acid. And they produce so much of it so they're able to break down all their food without issue. Also, if you're somebody that is under chronic stress, if you are stressed all the time, chronic stress will lead to low stomach acid. Somebody that is taking anti-acid, anything to prevent heartburn because you think you have too much of it, it could contribute to low stomach acid. Someone who eats too much sugar and processed food, you could deplete your stomach acid. Also, eating too quickly could also contribute to low stomach acid and sometimes certain infection in the stomach could contribute to low stomach acid. You say to yourself, Salome, is there any test that they could do for stomach acid? Yes, this is a simple test that you could do at home to test for your stomach acid. But if you have any conditions with your esophagus, with your stomach, you want to talk with your doctor about testing you for stomach acid. If you are relatively healthy, you could do this test at home without an issue. When you wake up early in the morning, when you have not eaten, I want you to take a glass of water, eight ounce glass of water, and then one teaspoon of baking soda. Put it in, stir it together, start to think about food, and then as your mouth starts to salivate, drink the glass of water with the baking soda. Give yourself 10 to 15 minutes and see if you will burp. If you have no burp or small burp, that means you have low stomach acid. If you have a big burp, you are good to go. If you happen to have no burp or low burp, then you are going to do these things to help to improve your stomach acid. One, chew your food, please. And then you're saying chewing, yes. If you haven't seen it, check out my video how to optimize your digestive health through the act of chewing and you will know all about that. Point number two, make sure you eliminate sugar and processed food from your diet because studies have shown they deplete stomach acid. Point number three, make sure you introduce some fermented foods into your diet like sauerkraut, 
like pickles, that fermentation process help when you eat them, it helps to improve your stomach acid. Also, drinking apple cider vinegar. One tablespoon apple cider vinegar in water before you eat have seen to help to improve stomach acid. If you have small burp, you could do that first thing in the morning before you eat. And that is what I do. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in the morning. That is on the days that I'm eating. If you are fasting, please, you don't drink that on an empty stomach and you don't eat anything. No. Also, eating ginger have been seen to help to improve your stomach acid. Then you could put lemon in water if you don't have access to apple cider vinegar and drink it in the morning. And that could also help to improve your stomach acid. So now you know. If you have any of these signs or if you make the test and you should have low burp or no burp, then these are some of the ways that you could help to improve your stomach acid. Thank you so much for watching this video. Are you new to this channel? Don't forget to subscribe. And when you do, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my educative videos. Until I see you in the next video, remember, this is Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving ways to healthy living. Thank you for your time.